Okay, we're going to continue chapter 2, which we started on Monday, the first part of chapter 2. So just to uh, recap a little bit of the main points. Chapter 2, we started from understanding how to review business transactions. From the beginning, we'll be capturing transactions, meaning the activities happen in the business, in journal. Okay, remember, a journal is organized by date. It's a chronological record of all the business activities. Then we'll be posting the same information, just organize it differently. Now we're organizing it by accounts, T accounts specifically, in Ledger. Okay, so all the business activities are captured twice, once in journal, then we copy the same information and paste it into the ledger. Ledger is organized by accounts. And remember, accounts represents either a particular type of asset, a particular type of liability, or a particular type of equity. Okay, so accounts represents the changes in a certain type of asset, liability, or equity. So we capture accounts changes in Ledger. Ledger is a book of T accounts. So you'll be able to see certain accounts that involves that were involved in a lot of the transactions. Perhaps some of the accounts were not as much affected. Okay, then at the end of the period, before we actually get to financial statements, we perform uh, the companies usually do another internal document before getting to financial statements just to double check that the debits equal the credits. So this part today at the end of the class will also be getting to trial balance. So this part here doesn't capture the detail record. Detail record are captured in journal and ledger. After we summarize a certain period of time of activities, the balance will be represented in trial balance, this internal document. Okay, so this is a summary of T account's final balance at the end. So this is a general accounting process. Okay, after doing this, after double checking that the deb debits equal credits, then the company can use trial balance information to finally do an official set of financial statements. Okay, so last week before we end the class, we talked about the debits and credits of different accounts. Remember that debit just represents the left side credit just represents the right side. So whether or not a debit of account represents increase depends on different types of accounts. Okay, so let's just do a brief summary of what we talked about at the end of last class. Assets, remember it's the left-hand side of the equation. When we apply debit and credit left and right to asset account, we always capture the information that increases assets on the left-hand side, on the, under the debit side. Okay, so meaning that if we have cash T account, for example, and we perform the type of service, provide a goods to customer, collect a cash immediately, let's say $1,000, this increased cash in the corporation, in the business, representing this information on the, under the debit side. Okay, so whenever you look at T accounts, the debit side, the numbers there represents the cash that corporation collected from customer or from clients. Right? Now the credit side, whenever a company actually purchased other assets for the purpose of business operations, they purchased supplies, purchased a piece of land, building, different types of assets, using up their cash, will be representing this information on the credit side. Okay, so credit deducts asset, debit increases assets value. This is the left-hand side of the equation. Okay, now if we look at the right-hand side, we have liabilities, we have equities. Liability has the opposite debit credit rule compared to asset. So whenever a company borrows money, for example, if they borrow $2,000, this will be recorded on the right side of T account. So whenever there's liability that happened, that incurred in the business, we'll be capturing this on the right side, the credit side. So debit side here represents deducting liability. So meaning after a certain period of time, if companies finally have the fund to pay off the money and a due date is coming coming up, let's say they paid off $1,000, and this $1,000 would be recorded on the left side of liability when you pay back the money. When you increase liability, when you borrow money, it's on the right side of liability account. When you pay it off, it's on the left side. Okay, so liability account is the opposite rule compared to asset account. Now, equity part is a little bit trickier compared to asset and liability. 
Okay, equity, remember that there's different elements of equity. The main two parts here, we have the fund that we raise from the public, the company raised from the public called common stock. So whenever there's fund raised, whenever a company issues common stock, obviously this increases their capital, so this boosts up stockholders' equity, boosts up net worth of the business, we'll be crediting this account. Okay, so stockholders' equity for the most of the accounts, for most of the accounts, it follows the same rule as liability. Whenever we have increase in the net worth of the business by issuing common stock, by generating revenue, based on providing service, providing goods to customer. When we increase the account, we credit it. Okay, but there's two exceptions here, because remember, stockholders equity also incorporates elements, dividends, when you give away cash to shareholders, or expenses. When you purchase, when you pay off certain, for example, rent expense, when you pay off advertising expense, salary expense related to the people that you hire, these expenses that are necessary to support company getting revenue, these are the things that reduces stockholders' equity. Okay, so whenever you had increased expenses, in reality it actually decreases equity. Okay, so the left-hand side of equity account, later on when we have different types of expense, you open up expense T account, <coughs> dividends T accounts. So whenever you have expenses accumulated, expenses will be posted here. Whenever you have dividends given away to shareholders, it will be posted on the left side just because it reduces stockholders' equity. Okay, so these, we can think of these two accounts as the exception of stockholders' equity. For the most part, when you gain revenue, when you issue common stock, retain earnings account, normal balance is the right side, the credit. Because this increases net worth of the business. Expenses, dividends are exceptions. Whenever you have increase in expenses, you give away dividends. These two, by nature of the accounts, reduces net worth of the stockholders' equity, reduces net worth of the business, so we post it under debit side. Okay, so this is a summary of the debit credit rule. Again, the most important thing you have to know is that debit credit just represents left and right. Whether it represents increase or decrease of certain accounts depends on account type. So asset increase, the shortcut to memorize this, try to mirror this with the accounting equation. Okay, you can just decide to memorize all the plus side so that you know the flip side will be minus. So for all the plus side, assets is on the left hand side of the equation, all the increases will be on the left side, debit side. For right side of the equation, liabilities and equity, Whenever we incur liabilities, we increase liability, increase the money that we owe to other party, we put it on the right side. Equity, whenever it increases, corporation's net worth increases by revenue, by raising capital from the public. Also, because it's on the right side of the equation, we post it under the right side. Okay, so the left side of the equation increases on the left, debit side. Right side of the equation increases on the right side for liabilities and equity equities, credit side. Okay, so this slide basically summarizes the complete debit credit rules for pretty much all the accounts that you will need for the first few chapters. Okay, assets, again, debit side increase, plus side is on the left side. Liabilities increase on the right side. Stockholders equity for common stock, retain earnings, revenues, the first three T accounts. When we increase it, it's on the credit side. Okay, expenses, dividends, by nature, these two accounts reduce the net worth of the business. You're paying off money to either pay the rent, you're paying off advertising expenses, you're paying off salary expenses, so this reduces corporations' capital. So whenever there's expenses incurred, stockholders' equity account will be reduced, so we post it under the left side. Dividends, similar to expenses. You're giving away a portion of your capital because you earned profit this season. You're giving it as a gift to shareholders, to investors. Again, reduces his equity. So we post this on the left. Okay, so make sure that you know these two are opposites compared to common stock, retain earnings, or revenues, just because it uses up capital. Any 
questions so far on the rules? Now, these debit and credit rules will be very important to know when we get to journal capturing business activities in the journal ledger, in the journal, in the ledger, because we need to know which side to put which account. So when you provide service to customers like cash, you first need to identify this activity. You need to identify the two accounts affected, cash, service revenue. Then you need to decide whether these accounts are being increased or decreased by its value. So if we collect cash, cash is increasing asset account. We'll be posting the dollar amount under the left side. Service revenue, we collect it. We also increase service revenue. We'll be posting things on the right side. So whenever a transaction occurs, whenever a business activity occurs, you have to identify the at least two accounts affected. It could be more. At least two accounts affected, and then decide whether it increases or decreases the account. Record it based on debit credit rule. So always, regardless of the accounts affected, always the debit side of the amount would equal the credit side. So this will make the accounting equation balance. Okay, we'll get to a few examples today in the um, exercises so you get a feeling of how to actually use these debit credit tool and tie it to the accounts, tie it to business activities.